All right, math friends, let's talk about keywords as a problem solving strategy in math. Now, there's probably two groups of teachers. The group of teachers who just absolutely cringed by me saying something about using keywords to teach problem solving. And another group of teachers who's like, yes, I love my keywords. I've got cute posters on my bulletin board, all about it. This video is actually for both groups. Now, I'm probably going to break all of the rules by going ahead and giving you the punchline that keywords is actually an ineffective problem solving strategy. And if you're in the group that's like, wait, why is that? I've been using keywords, it's worked for me. We're gonna talk about that in just a bit, so hang tight. But if you are the group that 100% agrees with me that using keywords as a problem solving strategy is not effective, this video was actually inspired by some work that I did with a pre-service teacher. And it made me realize that even if we do not believe in using keywords as a problem solving strategy, we can be unintentionally teaching students keywords. This was such an aha moment for me that I wanted to make sure that I shared it. In one of my observations, the teacher was having students work on a subtraction word problem. They were working through the problem in their little small groups, and then they were sharing out their strategies and their answers. It was fantastic. So for reference, the problem was something about having some money giving some money away, and then how much do you have left? And so she asked one of the groups of students, what was your answer? The students shared their answer and they said, oh, I subtracted to get this answer. And the teacher said, okay, tell me why you chose to subtract. Fantastic question. And the student explained that they decided to subtract because the problem said gave. In that moment, the teacher said, yep, great, and then moved on. In our reflection afterward, we talked about how the question of asking students why they approached it the way they did was wonderful, but then validating or co-signing or just agreeing with this idea that because the problem said gave, it was a subtraction problem, kind of reinforced this idea of keywords unintentionally because she had not taught students keywords. We had talked about why keywords was an effective strategy but when a student says, oh, they gave something away, so it is subtraction, but there wasn't any follow-up discussion, that that was unintentionally teaching keywords. So the initial question was right, but the discussion that happened after the question could have been pushed a little further. The word gave can actually reflect any operation depending on the problem. Someone could give you money, in which case you would be adding. It can be confusing or misleading to students if they get stuck on this idea that the word give means subtraction. And if you're in the group of teachers that loves keywords, this is kind of getting at one of those reasons why keywords are ineffective, because just like I said, give can be really any operation. There are problems that don't have any keywords. There are problems that have multiple keywords. So keywords are just really unreliable and they only work for very specific problems. They certainly don't work for multi-step problems. So that leaves us with this question of, if not keywords, then what? Another question that we're left with is, if validating this idea of gave equals subtraction, what could the teacher have done in that situation? So really the goal of the question of why did you subtract is to facilitate discussion and kind of like bring to light the structure of the problem that aligns with subtraction. So rather than looking for keywords, we're looking for patterns or structures in problems where subtraction would help us solve it, or addition would help us solve it, or multiplication or division. You may be wondering what I mean when I say problem structures, because these problem structures are likely so deeply ingrained in us that we naturally see them when we're out and about in the world. For example, when we're combining the cost of one thing with another, we know to add because we're joining those two costs. Or if we are splitting things up evenly between a group of students, we know to divide because we know we're sharing fairly. That is a problem structure or a problem type. And when students understand those problem structures, then they can spot those out in the world or in other problems and know which operation to use. Rather than looking for individual words, that can be misleading or can have multiple meanings or no meaning at all when it comes to the operation that would 
be best for the problem. There's been a ton of work that's been done to identify the key problem types for each operation. And if you want me to do a video on that, definitely let me know. Just drop a comment below and I can add that to my list of upcoming videos. But this is the understanding we're really trying to pull out when we ask these really strong how and why questions about students thinking. So I have a few takeaways for you from this classroom experience. If your students are relying on keywords as a problem solving strategy, we definitely want to build up their problem solving toolbox with different strategies that are more reliable and effective and really long lasting and applicable to life outside the classroom. If you check the description of the video, I actually have a great free resource about the trap of keywords. And it's essentially a problem solving sort with all kinds of keywords, but they are aligned to operations that you wouldn't typically pair with keywords. It's great to do with students who are dependent on using keywords, and it's great to do with other teachers who don't yet understand why keywords aren't effective. So takeaway number one, we wanna move away from using keywords as a problem solving strategy. Second takeaway is we wanna make sure that we aren't unintentionally teaching keywords by validating this idea that it's subtraction because it said gave. Even if we're not teaching it, if we say yes and move on without really pointing students' attention to the structure of the problem, then we are teaching keywords to some extent. And then I think the third takeaway is that we as educators really need to understand the different problem structures so that when we ask these really good questions, we know what we're trying to guide students to. We know what to highlight, when to push students deeper, and what patterns to draw out so that students see, I used subtraction or subtraction works for this problem because we're comparing two quantities or because we are finding the difference between these two amounts. It's not about a specific word, it's about the structure. So I'm curious what thoughts come up for you. I have a couple other videos about problem solving and obviously check the description for a free resource, but what do you think about this? Do you agree about keywords being ineffective? Do you see how easy it is to maybe unintentionally teach those keywords? And would you like to learn more about the different problem structures? I can't wait to talk math with you again very soon.